for the first time since Russia invaded Ukraine a year ago, Secretary of State Blinken and Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov met one-on-one. -on -one. It was an encounter, they to say, not a scheduled meeting, at the margins on the outside of a G20 meeting in New Delhi today. Blinken told reporters afterwards he emphasized three points to his Russian counterpart, that the U.S. will support Ukraine for as long as it takes, Russia must reverse Putin's decision and implement the New START treaty, and Moscow should release a wrongfully detained American businessman Paul Whelan. With new pressure from France and Germany in recent days on Ukraine to begin somehow negotiating with Russia, Blinken said afterwards that the U.S. stands with Ukraine's President Zelensky's 10-point peace plan. President Putin, however, has demonstrated zero interest in engaging, saying there's nothing to even talk about unless and until Ukraine accepts, and I quote, the new territorial realities, while doubling down on his brutalization of Ukraine. But objections today from Russia and China uh, prevented any condemnation of the war by the G20. This group did not produce a final joint statement, an unusual event, according to Secretary Blinken afterwards. Here to help put this into perspective is Michael Crowley, diplomatic correspondent for The New York Times. Michael, this meeting, meeting, encounter, whatever you want to call it, between Lavrov and Blinken, the first one since before the war when we were all in Sweden and they met and had a pretty contentious meeting, uh, lasted less than 10 minutes. A lot happened, though. Give me your takeaways. That's right, Andrea. And as you know, because I sat next to you, I think, in the press conference, we were in Geneva, Switzerland, uh, back in January of 2022, the last time that uh, Blinken met with Lavrov. And um, this was notable uh, because there had not been any contact since then, um, had not been a meeting like that. And uh, Secretary Blinken did use the opportunity to get a lot in. How much of a difference it's going to make is not clear to me. Um, for instance, uh, the U.S. has been trying to secure the release of Paul Whelan for a very long time. Um, he has been imprisoned in Russia for years now. He was not part of the prisoner swap that released Brittany Gleiner. The Russians are not showing any inclination to move, and it's not clear that Secretary Blinken brought anything new to the table. Um, underscoring U.S. support for Ukraine uh, is something worth doing, I suppose, but President Biden made it very clear in his trip to Kyiv uh, that the U.S. is in for the long haul uh, in supporting Ukrainians. I think the Russians know the American position on that pretty well at this point. Uh, so it's not clear, you know, how much this has really changed the game. And the U.S. has made its position on new start very clear to the Russians. Uh, it can be helpful to communicate things in person. And a big question is what might Blinken have said that hasn't been part of a public readout? Um, but I think uh, f as a final word here, probably the main purpose here is for the U.S. to show that it is still looking to have dialogue with Russia. We are not the ones who are refusing to try to find some way to end this war. Uh, a lot of the world is impatient to see this start to wrap up, to get us into a stage of peace talks. And I think it's important for Secretary Blinken and the Biden administration to show that they are at least willing to talk to the Russians, even if they don't think now is the time for actual negotiations. And in fact, the location being in India, it's so important because India, of course, has been supporting Russia in a lot of ways, uh, keeps buying its oil, for instance, not innovating the sanctions, buying uh, cheaper price-controlled oil. Uh, but Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, was just there and got a lot of pushback from the global south against the war in the U.S. and NATO support for it. Then she went to Kyiv. Uh, but the, so the war in Ukraine did overshadow this ga gathering, with Russia and China refusing to join that statement. But Blinken also confirmed sanctions could be one of the tools the U.S. would be using against China if it were to provide lethal military aid to Russia, as the U.S. claimed again today China is considering. Here's what Blinken said. Were China to engage in material lethal support for Russia's aggression, uh, war were to engage in the systematic evasion of sanctions uh, to help Russia, that would be a serious problem for, uh, for our countries. This concern that China is considering providing lethal military assistance to, to Russia, this is a shared concern. And many other partners uh, have uh, raised this, and not just raised this with us, but, it's my understanding, have raised it directly with China, including here today in Delhi. So, Michael, no backing down from Lincoln about uh, what they say is, you know, solid intel that China is considering it. Uh, Bill Burns, the CIA, you know, director, was very clear about that, that he's confidence in it. 
what is your takeaway, though, about the possibility of sanctions if China were to do it? Is that an idle threat? Sanctioning China would be very hard for Europe to swallow. It's their biggest market. Absolutely. This is new, by the way. We, I personally pressed the secretary in a press conference a week or so think. ago. What step would you take? Would you do, impose sanctions? He didn't want to get specific. He's starting to get more specific. As you say, it's a very tough step to take, Andrea. China has a lot of ways they could hit us back economically. So do we want to start getting into an escalating economic confrontation with China? That's going to be a tough decision for the administration to make if China goes forward with arming the Russians, assisting them in that way. But Ukraine right now is pretty much the highest priority for the Biden administration, so they might be willing to do it, but it is risky.